Go ahead. Hi there. Hi, Mr. McCory. Hi there. Hi, um, my daughter just got a question for the, the um, cases the that you recommend for the laptops. You had recommended a, a good case last year for uh -huh. Aaron, and um, Aaron said that one broke, and that you're recommending this one. I don't know if you could. I got, I got four on the website, four different choices and all different kind of prices. Oh, great. Okay, on uh, the Clark website? That's right. They're in, they're in red text there on the right. Perfect. Okay. We had some old ones, and we, we gave out everything that we had. Okay, great. Um, I just want to make sure we get the right size and whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over that tonight. Perfect. Okay. Okie doke.
So the front row is empty. Can you believe it? Even on our busiest nights last week, those front rows stayed empty for a long time. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to orientation, take three. We are glad that you were able to be with us this evening. Uh, those of you who are here live, and we do have a few people who are watching via live stream, streaming for various reasons. Uh, we're very excited to get this school year going. Super excited that we've seen some of you already for three days this school year. I'm Mrs. Kohut, the principal here at Clark Advanced Learning Center, and this evening we're also going to hear from some others. You'll be hearing from Dr. Judd, who is our assistant principal. You'll hear from Ms. Jones, who many of you already know, our school counselor. You'll also be hearing from Dr. Bonds, who is our career coordinator. Many of our seniors already started with her today for their internship class if they're taking it in the fall. And we will also hear from Mr. McCrory. So you won't have to listen to my voice the entire time. We're going to change it up and tag team the presentations. And for some of these things, we're going to recognize that we can move fairly quickly because some of them may have already happened since we're already into the school year. We're getting a little bit of, maybe I need to step back, a little bit of feedback. So welcome to this school year. I would ask that you hold any questions you have until the end of each little segment. And then at that point, we'll open it up for any questions. So feel free to write on your folders if you think of something that comes to your mind and you want to be sure that you ask about that. At the very end, of course, we'll also hang out. So if you have any individual questions that you prefer not to ask of the entire group, in front of the entire group, we'll go ahead and um, have those that time for question and answer as well. If for any reason and at any time you need to stretch, by all means, those of you who are here or at home, feel free to do that. The restrooms, if you head out the double doors from the knowledge room, ladies' room is to the left and the gentlemen's room is to the right. And then feel free to come on back and join us if you do need to use the restrooms before we um, are finished tonight, because we're really not going to have any, any big breaks other than question and answer time. We will be posting the presentation on the website, and you'll be receiving a feedback form as well via email, so that we will be wanting to know just how this session goes and that information uh, that's provided to you and the means by which it's being provided to you. So as I had mentioned, we are going to have five of these six people tonight be our presenters. Mrs. Decker is not with us this evening, but let me just remind some of you and kind of introduce by way of this slide that Mrs. Decker is our administrative assistant. So if you are at the front desk or if you come to the main office, that is Mrs. Decker um, with the dark hair, and she also is the one that heads up everything textbooks and textbook codes. So please keep that in mind if you need anything along that realm. You want to be sure that Mrs. Decker is the one that's getting your attention there. You can see our entire team. Actually, our entire team minus a couple because you'll see in a few moments that we have added a few staff members, faculty members very recently. Uh, but this was our very first day back on July 26th when we all came back together and were able to be, once again, better together as our Clark team. We have a new president here on our campus, so wanted to give you this picture of Dr. Alex, as he likes to be called. Alex is our campus president, so we no longer have a provost, which was the title in the past for many, 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 many 50 some odd years at the campus. It is now a campus president. So Dr. Alex, his office is over in the A building, and he was here uh, one night last week, and he told the students, by all means, if his door is open, come on in. He wants to meet you. You'll also probably see him around campus much, uh, very frequently, and we want you to recognize him if you were to see him. We also have with us, as a parent and a teacher, Ms. Dunn, Jacqueline Dunn, 
and Miss Dunn is back with us. She had been at Clark. She took a little bit of a hiatus and came back to us now. She is not only our teacher of English language arts, one of our two on that English team, but she also teaches journalism for yearbook along with Mrs. Gribble. And she is our Spanish teacher. So we're extremely thrilled to have Miss Dunn back with us here at Clark. And some of you may have already had her for class. If not, hopefully she'll be a teacher that you will have in the future. Another new teacher we have with us uh, this school year is Miss Ballard. And Miss Ballard is not with us this evening, but if you have Miss Ballard, you would have already started classes with her because all of her classes also started. She's part of our two-person mathematics team, and she comes to us not only with uh, high school experience, but also with college experience. And she is teaching various levels of mathematics, most of them at this point being Algebra 2. We also have another new math teacher as part of that two-person dynamic duo, and she's with us this evening, Ms. Deanna Vale. Ms. Vale is joining us also with lots of college experience. She actually had retired from the college, continued to adjunct with the college, and we were very fortunate that one of the things she dreamed of doing was teaching high school. So we're exceptionally thrilled that Deanna has chosen, um, Ms. Vale has chosen to join our Clark team. This year, or this semester, she'll be teaching the Math for College Readiness class along with a section of Algebra 2. She'll also be teaching at the college level for us the intermediate algebra and the pre-calculus. And again, if you have Ms. Vale, you may have not met her yet because she doesn't officially start here until Friday, but we would encourage you at the end of the presentation to say hi. And again, she will be here on Friday. So high school classes, you'll see Ms. Vale on Friday, and those of you in dual enrollment, you'll see her on Monday for the Monday, Wednesday math classes. We also have one other person not with us this evening, but she is with us on a part-time basis as our student success specialist, and that is Ms. Boison, or we like to call her Ms. V. Ms. V is actually now downstairs. She's on this side of the knowledge room. Ms. Jones has the office on this side of the knowledge room, and now Ms. V has the office on this side of the knowledge room. So very, very available to students. Uh, parents, if you ever find that your young person is in need of some extra support, whether it's just checking in with them on a regular basis, being sure they're kind of focusing and following a certain routine, Ms. V is just perfect for that. And again, she is part-time. She's with us on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Our mission, we are here to equip and empower students for success. And that really comes from teachers identifying what is it that our young people need to know and be able to do. And it's not just to pass the test. It's all those other life skills that we want to encourage them to take on so that they will be part of a society even beyond Clark. Because for some of us sitting here as seniors, that real life is coming real fast. And we want to be sure that our young people are set up for success. Our progression plan is online. I'm going to show you parts of that in just a moment, as is our student handbook online. So at any point, you're welcome to reference that online. You can see here from our student handbook, QR code, and by all means, at any time, if you want to take a picture of any of these slides, feel free to do so. This QR code would get you directly to our handbook. And we will be going over a few of these in more detail, but the changes that are most um, substantial this year are for the attendance. Dr. Judd will talk about some specific policies for attendance. We also know from Mrs. Decker that textbook distribution has to happen within a certain window. Because I'll give you an example. Last spring, there was a student who emailed Mrs. Decker about 11 o'clock one night saying that he needed a particular resource for the next day, eight weeks into the semester. Well, that wasn't going to happen because we are financially and fiscally responsible, so we didn't just have that book hanging around. Whenever that window is done, 
If we don't need resources, those resources go back because taxpayers' money is what's taking care of resources for dual enrollment. So students, when you hear on announcements and you see in the electronic newsletter every Friday that this is the window for textbooks, please make sure you follow that. For dress code, we've tightened it up just a little bit, and you'll hear about that from Dr. Judd in just a little bit as well. And throughout the handbook, there were just some updates that had to do with our new organizational changes. Because not only do we have a new campus president, but we also have, as of last August, a new overall Indian River State College president. And with those changes, you'll just see some of those updates in the roles that people play. The progression plan, the, again, updates that are most important and come from statute. The statute, the state of Florida has said that 9th, 10th, 11th, 11th graders, and heck, we're going to throw in the seniors because the rule is we need to have them learn about basic first aid and CPR. So there will be some one to one and a half hour seminars or webinar seminars coming up in the near future, trainings in which students will be able to come on in and be trained on basic first aid and CPR. And we are very excited about that because we feel as though that is a skill that should leave with each of our students so that they can be very helpful in the community if ever called to be so. Civics assessment for students who are in US government class. Starting this school year, there must be a civics literacy assessment. So with Mr. Judd, any students who were with him last year for US government, they actually took the pilot test of this. They did very well on that pilot test. And it still counts for them. This year, if you are in U.S. government, which takes place in the spring semester, you will also be guided to some wonderful outcomes by Mr. Judd. Moment of silence, which Dr. Judd will go into a little bit in more detail. You've been here three days. At the onset of our day, we start now with a moment of silence. 60 seconds is a long time. It is amazing. So that when the announcements are begun, we literally set the timer for 60 seconds because the statute says that in all public schools in Florida, we will give students and faculty staff throughout the school at least one minute, no more than two minutes. Well, we have found that one minute is a long time when all you are doing is reflecting. And Dr. Judd will talk about that in more detail in her presentation. The other thing that's been added to the progression plan from statute is the fact that teachers need to have efficient and faithful teaching. Well, yeah, I think we're on our 18th year of doing that. So it's pretty interesting that the state has now said that needs to be within our handbook, and that is what we need to be providing. And we definitely are doing that. The new thing would be the benchmarks for excellent student thinking, or best standards. This year, in English classes at the high school level, so English 2, 3, and 4, have those best standards as part of what, what students need to know and be able to do. As of next year, we move that into the realm of mathematics for the new standards for Florida. The website, those of you who are returning to us, you might just need a reminder. Those of you who are new to us, you might want to do a quick little picture of this. The website, when you go there on the right hand side, there's going to be a place where you can get to a special area. And if you type in parent or student, and then the password is the same for each, cranes, plural. That's plural of our mascot, cranes. And that'll get you to some information that is Clark specific for only those who are attending Clark. So not just the general public. There's lots of stuff on our website everybody can get to, but this is where we would put some of that special information that we want only our parents and students to have. So it is about equipping and empowering everybody, and if you take a look, we definitely want everyone, especially our students, to participate seriously and purposefully. You're coming here, you're spending time, you're investing, that time in your education, and we want that to be very purposeful for you. 
Uh, with that comes the responsibility that all of us, each of us, needs to take. So not only students, but also parents and guardians as our partners and our school staff, our faculty members, and our other support staff members. We want to be sure that everybody is assuming responsibility. Within the handbook, there are actually sections that are broken down for you to see what are the responsibilities of the students, what are the responsibilities of the parents, and of course, what are the responsibilities of the employees here at Clark. So we would encourage you to take a look and review that as well from the handbook. Academic notification. Our new students have not only heard about this during their student success class that we had yesterday, uh, but you will be hearing about this more and more as we head into the second week of school because on the 23rd of this month, Mr. McCrory will actually pull a report from FOCUS, which is where all the grades are kept, in order to see which students are at a 73% or below. So initially, this will only be for the high school classes. The dual enrollment classes that are taught here at Clark do not go into FOCUS until four and a half weeks into the semester, what we consider our interims. But on the 23rd, he'll pull a report. We'll get to see which students are sitting at a 73% or below average. That was a threshold that was set by our teachers going back about four years ago because they recognized that if students were at a 73, ooh, it would be really easy to slip down into those Ds and Fs. Um, however, it's also not a lost cause. They've got plenty of time with action on their part to bring those grades up to the Bs and the As. So parents, you will also be included on notifications that come from that. Um, let me just reiterate that high school, that's going to happen every two weeks. And for dual enrollment classes that happen here at Clark, you'll be seeing that just about every four and a half to five weeks because that's the only time that dual enrollment grades will be put into the system. Action planning is very, very important because the student needs to recognize what do I need to do more of or what do I need to do less of, like, you know, gaming or leaving campus or whatever that might be, so that the grades can come up. So you'll work along with your teacher, parents, we're going to ask for your support with that as well, so that students can get their grades up by the next time a report is pulled in that two-week period. Communication. We use one call now. Many of you have probably already received a message or a few messages this year. You would have either heard um, Dr. Bond's voice, my voice, a robotic voice. Maybe you already opted in for text messages. If you haven't already, you should do that. Um, strongly recommend it, especially if you prefer to get little succinct text messages. If you text the word alert to 22300, 22300, that will let our system know that it is able to send you text messages. And at any time, if you're tired of getting those texts, you can actually opt out of that. But you will receive, when we, when we push the buttons and we say this message is going to all 12th grade parents, or this message is going to all grades, all parents, all students, it would come to you as a voice message and or an email if you're not opting into those text messages. Partnering with you as the parents. We will have our first meeting on Thursday, September 2nd. That will actually be an evening where we would encourage you to come out and meet our new teachers in more of an opportunity for you to ask them questions and them to tell uh, a bit about themselves and the courses that they teach, the expectations that they have. That will be at 6 o'clock on that Thursday, first Thursday of September. In the fall, we also have two other first Thursday dates that are set, October 7th and November 4th. And that Parents as Partners, or soon to be renamed organization, is really an opportunity for you to come on out, hopefully a little less formal than this and a little more um, collective in nature, that it's not all about us talking to you. It's also giving you the opportunity to ask questions and to give input, provide us suggestions. So those are the fall dates. We would hope you would mark your calendars for those. 
followed by in the spring we change to the third Thursdays and that would be January 20th, February 17th, and April 21st because on the third Thursday of March we're on spring break. So we skip that one. So again, mark your calendars. We will let you know in a, ahead of time if there's any special event going on, any special speaker on those particular nights, and we would ask you to come out and join us. We also have the senior night coming up on September 28th, and there are a lot of seniors in the room tonight. So parents and seniors, please come out on September 28th, which is a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock because that is when Ms. Jones especially is going to offer you up lots of customized information about you as the senior, but, and also giving you general information about applications for college, scholarships, lots of information for helping you move forward, because it's going to be here before we know it, that graduation, and we want you to be prepared beyond that graduation. Juniors and sophomores, we would love for you all with parents to come out on October 14th. Also, um, this one is a Thursday at 6 o'clock. So October 14th, if you would come out on that evening, again, you'll get some customized information. And uh, that information that Ms. Jones can share about the rest of your time in high school. Risk mitigation, boy. Did I wish this was a slide that we could have gotten rid of this year? Well, we've toned it down a bit. Last year, um, I think we had about five minutes of slides on risk mitigation. This year, we will let you know that if you are not feeling well, students, as well as faculty and staff, stay home. We don't want you here if you're sick. If there is any opportunity that comes around that or any instance that comes around that you know that you are COVID positive, we need to know about it. So if you would kindly let Dr. Judd or myself via email or phone know about that, we will follow protocol that we need to so that we can make sure other students and our faculty and staff here at Clark are remaining safe. Uh, teachers will be providing work whenever students are, are absent, whether it has to do with that pesky C word that we wish we could get rid of, or it's just any old illness that we used to have. So please, students, students, you need to communicate with your teachers if you're going to be absent. Whether it's for one day or an extended period, please be sure you're communicating with them. On our side, we will also give them um, limited information, but we want to be sure that you are communicating and we will also communicate that they need to be sure that work is being provided and a time span for when that work would need to be completed. Inside our buildings here on campus, IRSC is continuing with mask optional so that you can make your own decision about wearing masks. Um, we have had faculty and staff wearing them, other faculty and staff not. We've had students wearing them, we've had students not. So you need to make that personal choice that your family is comfortable with. If you're outside, we've got plenty of lovely seating out near uh, the pond on the patio. So you do not at all need to have a mask. So again, stay as mask optional. We do recommend masks for the un unvaccinated individuals. However, again, I will say it is your decision. Hand sanitizing in every single room, you will find hand sanitizers. In our bathrooms, obviously, you will find water and soap. So just continue to be as clean as possible, and we will continue to be as safe as possible. This slide, to just sum this up, is if we know that there has been an issue, that there has been a student or a team member, an adult team member, who has tested positive for COVID, we will be sure that that room gets a deep cleaning. And that deep cleaning will happen not only with disinfect, disinfecting solutions, but also we have an electrostatic sprayer. In fact, we have two of them. We hope not to have to use them too often this fall into spring, but we do have those, and that takes place overnight. So by the time our young people and our adults come back into the building, we will have deeply disinfected everything. School buses, for those of you who might take the school bus in the morning or the afternoon, uh, Martin County Schools is continuing to disinfect as they had done last year between bus routes. And 
for career development and internship. I want to share on behalf of Dr. Bonds, career planning. That's what she's here for. She wants to meet with you, especially as seniors, and a lot of you started that with her already as juniors. She wants to be sure that you are taking inventories, taking assessments, so that you have a good indication of what is it that you might want to be when you grow up. So while she will definitely work along with our 10th graders, continue to work as 11th graders, really focus at the end of your 11th grade year, and then work with you on your internships in your senior year, it's very, very important that you come to recognize that her office is out here and to the right in the Career Cafe area, very fitting, the Career Cafe area for our career coordinator. And she will want to be working along with you to determine what is the best placement with the many business partners we have. We have well over 100 business partners at any given time who are willing and able to work with our young people for 60-hour internships. And at this point, unfortunately, if uh, students are wanting to do medical, or if they're wanting to do anything with the police or fire, we're having limited opportunities for that in person. However, she's continuing to work her best magic and her best pleas to get people into those internship opportunities that they would have. If any of you happen to be in a career that you would like to share with others, I would invite you to email uh, Dr. Bonds or give her a phone call. Her information is on our website and let her know what your business is. It could be that you're in accounting. It could be that you're in construction. It could be that you happen to be someone in the medical field and you are willing and able to have someone come in. You might be an entrepreneur. We would love to have entrepreneurs of various types so that our students have that opportunity of 60 hours in the field working along with professionals and recognizing whether or not that would be a job that they would consider in the future. Uh, let's see, let's see. Class did start today. It's every Wednesday for our seniors who are in her fall class. You can also see her contact information right on here. Her voice number is a wonderful, or Google voice number is one that's easily accessible that uh, if you are currently in her class or if you're just looking to make an appointment with her, the 419-5768 is a terrific number to use. Martin Youth Leadership. When we were at orientation last week, we actually had some of our former students come in and talk about Martin Youth Leadership. So we wanted to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to hear in, the, in Martin County we have every year an opportunity for a small group of students, usually about 30 to 40 students, who have monthly experiences. So yes, it involves missing a day of classes once a month. And it's about learning the local history, the government, the business, arts and culture, criminal justice, all about the environment, right here in Martin County. And you can, again, see Miss Dr. Bonds so that you can follow through with an application process. Some of you may have already done that because if you were a student here in the spring, we had highly publicized that this program was happening. We would encourage juniors, current juniors would be the ones that would be most focused on wanting to become part of Martin Youth Leadership. They are accepting some seniors this year because of the craziness of last year. Um, however, at this point, we have quite a few senior applications already, so it would be most open to our juniors. This is the traffic pattern. So again, if you've already been here at Clark these first three days or prior years, you already know. You come onto campus. I know it's a really busy, busy slide. But what I'm going to say to you is cones. Moms, dads, guardians, big brothers, sisters, whoever you are driving, look for the cones. So as you come onto campus and you're coming down Crane Lane, you're going to come to uh, the Second turn in, make that right hand turn. You'll be near the sidewalk, look for the cones, and that's where we need you to drop off your sons or daughters. And as you drop them off carefully, you're gonna make a left and then just make that loop around the rest of the parking lot. So you're not coming all the way to the back of the parking lot. Students, and I actually see a lot of you who I know already drive to campus, 
you're going to make sure you come on crane lane all the way, all the way, all the way to the back of crane lane. So follow it all the way to the end, make that right hand turn, and then go towards the end of the parking lot. Because the first few bays are reserved for faculty, staff, and for visitors. And our students park in the next four to five bays, and they actually can come over and come into the building through the west side of our building. So where you see the blue sunshade is where our students should be parking down that way and then coming in through the west. You are more than welcome to come in through the main entrance as well. And if you do forget your uh, ID, which is your key, you'll have to come through the main ent entrance. The pickup looks very much the same in that you want to look for the cones. So anyone picking up a student is asked to come into the sidewalk area, be adjacent to the sidewalk, parallel to that, pick up your student, and then turn to the left, zip around the parking lot. Um, but with that, I will say 20 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour. We had to put in an, an extra speed bump about a year and a half ago, and uh, that was with reason that we had to do that. Students, I will just warn you that both my window and Dr. Judd's window looks right out on Crane Lane. We have been known to write little emails to students and say, hey, slow it down. Because we can see when there's somebody driving too fast or we've even had instances where people are trying to pass other people on Crane Lane. It is only an in and an out, so no passing people either. You'll get a gentle reminder the first time it happens if we catch you, but after that, keep in mind it is a privilege to drive to school. So students, it is a privilege to have your parking permit here to park in the D parking lot, and we would love you to keep that privilege, so make good choices. Success tips, eating well. You may not get deliveries, and some of you here have heard this before. We like mushroom on our pizza. If you order a mushroom pizza, we're going to love it because it will be ours. If it gets delivered to the school, it does not go to you. Moms and dads, if you have to drop something off, that's, that's perfectly fine. But you cannot call Grubhub. You cannot bring up that app for Uber Eats and get that delivered to school because it will not be acceptable for you to collect that delivery. Also, no visitors, moms and dads, cutie patootie from the, um, um, I don't know, humanities class over in the other building. You may not bring that person to lunch. We do have a lovely lunch spot. Our patio is beautiful overlooking the pond. However, it's only for Clark students, so no visitors. The cafe is not open. New students are saying, hey, I didn't even know you had a cafe. Well, we have it for two years, and now there's remodeling over in that building, so there is no cafe over at the A building of IRSC. The lunch service is free through Martin County School District. Monday and Tuesday were non-Martin County School District days, so there was a charge of $3 for lunch. Anytime Martin County School District is closed, Clark, as a school, we will bring lunch on. It will be ordering you know, from a favorite pizzeria for our students or from Publix with chicken for our students. And there is a nominal charge of $3. Unless students have free and reduced lunch, then we'll be sure that they also eat for free on those days. But really, at this point, for everyone, lunch is free. What you do need to do, if you are going to be on campus at 12.15, any day of the week, and you want to eat, you need to go on to either Martin County's website where you can get to food and nutrition services and you can actually click on the link there for Clark or we've taken that and we've moved it to our website as well. So if you go to our website and you scroll down on the right hand side, you're going to see a link so you can order up lunch. It's expected that you order that lunch by 8 o'clock the Monday morning. There are some other correspondents out there that say Sunday night, but as our lunch lady has told us, they're not going to look at it till Monday morning. So go ahead and make sure, maybe even set an alarm on your phone, 
write it big on your refrigerator. Make sure you get that order in because by Monday morning at 8 o'clock, when they look at that, that's going to give them an indication of how they need to set up for lunches Monday through Friday for that coming week. Um, today, we had the longest lunch line I have ever seen. And we were able to feed every student who had signed up and then we did have a couple of students who had not signed up and she still did have some food for them. But that cannot be guaranteed unless you have signed up for that. Now this is very interesting. I've been told to share with you that there is a new website for meal charging, but then in the next column, lunch is free. So what I have figured out about this is some of you coming from other schools may have had money left on the old system probably not even from last year because lunch was free last year, but from the year before. So we are bringing to your attention that this new myschoolbucks.com, if you go there, it's for two reasons. Maybe you're checking how much money is left on your account, and if you have a senior, you probably want to start figuring out how you can get that money back. Has nothing to do with us, has nothing to do with us. But we would offer up the information that you can contact Food and Nutrition Services uh, through Martin County and they can assist with that. And the other thing is, it is tied to the ID. So our students' IDs, which are also their keys, in addition are their meal tickets, if you will. So they need to show their ID because that's going to be connected to the food, the food service that's provided. Regular lunch price, free and reduced, doesn't matter. It's all free for everybody. But I am going to tell you that in the past, or even um, situationally this year, if you need to apply for what normally would be free or reduced lunch, please do so. Because not only is it about having lunch at a lower price, that's not what matters this year, but there are so many other reasons why, if there is a financial hardship, this application needs to be on file so that, for instance, ACT and SAT. If you take ACT and SAT, we have the ability to give you a voucher so that you actually do not need to pay for the testing. The testing is becoming more and more expensive to the realm of $55 to $75 a pop. So that is definitely worthwhile to fill out that application if you have any financial hardship at any time. Again, I would encourage you with any questions in regards to that, please follow up with the Martin County School District. Um, I'm sorry, the Martin County School District Food and Nutrition Services. Is everything okay? Okay. <laughs> One other thing I want to mention, in addition to what was on that other slide, is that this year, even if you bring your favorite sandwich, maybe you've eaten, uh, I don't know, peanut butter and jelly since you were in kindergarten and you always bring it to school, they're going to have a fruit, a grain, and a milk for free for you. So all you need to do is let them know that you're going to take advantage of the take three and it's free. And it's all about rounding out that meal for you. So with that, I'd like to bring this part of the presentation to a close. Do right, obviously, avoid doing wrong. Make good choices. You'll hear that a lot on our announcements here and throughout the school building. Let this sink in, students. The more good choices you make, the more choices you can make. The more good choices you make, the more choices or opportunities for choices that you can make. And adults, I think you would agree. Make good choices and you'll have more opportunities to make your own choices. Do everything to the best of your ability with the time allotted to you. So management of time is very, very important. We also know that you being as responsible as possible and we, all of us, better together being as responsible as possible is absolutely essential and accountability is huge. We are gonna hold you to what the expectation is. And finally, please show people that you care now more than ever. 
So kindness counts, and you're going to come to know that this is a zone of kindness here at Clark, but we hope that it just doesn't stay here. We hope that you take your, your kindness and your good deeds and you spread them around the world. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Judd. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello out there in um, computer land. The code word is Dr. Judd is awesome when I ask if you were awake when I spoke. Okay. You guys are supposed to laugh, enjoy it, and bring some money. Um, anyway, I'm going to fly through stuff as quickly as I can. Um, Mrs. Cove talked about the theme of synergy and being better together, and we have a lot of stakeholders. Um, we have a lot of people who the success of Clark is riding on. Um, our staff, our students, our parents, the community, the Martin County School District, and the River State College, we all have to work together to really make Clark the success that it is and sustain and grow and become even better. So we count on everybody in this room and beyond to make sure that, that we are better together. A um, big piece of what I'm going to talk about is kind of two different categories, uh, physical safety and emotional safety. Um, so I'm going to start with the emotional safety side of things. We have a lot of initiatives in place um, that we know um, the pandemic did not cause people to have struggles emotionally, to face difficult times, to have a lot of trauma in their life. Um, it exacerbated it a lot. Um, it created maybe some new difficulties for people, but we've known, and so um, social emotional learning and really focusing on the whole student has been in place for quite some time. This is not new, but the law changed or some things were added that are required that I'll kind of point out and I'll do a quick review of some things that we've always done here and will continue to do as far as social and emotional learning. Um, the one I like to call it mindful minute, but as Ms. Coe said, it's that required in statute, one minute uh, moment of silence. Um, so moment of silence each morning, come on, and yes, I 100%, how many of you have been in here for first block so far this week? I know it's a long minute, isn't it? I get it, who knew? Um, but I promise you, I press go as soon as I stop talking and I come back on the minute it hits that timer. Um, but anyway, so during that time, use it for whatever you want, because again, law says I can't even tell you what to think about or to do with that time other than you have to be quiet. Um, on the back of your ID cards, new students that came with a sticker on it, um, returning students, if you've been in class, um, you got a sticker on the back, returning students, if you haven't been here this week because maybe you're in all dual enrollment, please um, come by the front office um, or the, um, any of the teachers here. They have some stickers because we also are required now by statute to have um, the back of your ID card, have the suicide hotline number as well as 211 so that should you or anyone else ever be um, in need of assistance, you have it at your fingertips, because I guess they think you carry your IDs like in your sleep and at home and other stuff, but no, you should have them all on you, and that's one of the physical safety pieces I'll cover is that you have to have that ID available to you at any time you're here on the Clark campus. Um, the wellness modules, those came into play about three years ago, I believe. Um, that's that six hours of required instruction in mental wellness and mental health, uh, substance abuse and human trafficking. It'll continue to be online. Some things do change each year, um, but it'll continue to be online, and I'll be sending out all the information as far as that goes. It needs to be completed by the end of the year, but I like to give out gifts when you finish early because it makes my life easier to not have to hunt you down and harass you. Um, we have a therapist who's on campus through Tykes and Teens, um, so if there is a barrier to getting to an outpatient office, we do have a therapist here right now. She's here one day a week. Referrals for that would go through Ms. Jones, and um, she can help kind of sometimes get you a little bit ahead of the line um, because we know therapists are swamped in the community. Um, but please make sure just to touch base with Ms. Jones if, if you're looking for that step up above what we can do as far as prevention and a little bit of education. Um, the relationship building circles, those have been in place district-wide for the last couple of years. Even our staff does them before just about every training or staff meeting because it's, it's just, it makes life better to get to know the people around you, um, to, for the teachers to get to know you, something beyond what your test score said about you or how you're doing on your academics. Um, so those circles are going to continue. 
Um, not, it's not every class all the time. It is not group therapy. Um, it is definitely just a, an opportunity to get to know each other and feel a little bit more bonded and connected because one of the number one ways um, to prevent physical safety issues on campus is for students to feel that they have a connection to their school campus. Um, base modules, that's something that's a lot of educational materials and videos on any number of topics. Um, I put this here because you absolutely, a lot of students have some anxiety about returning to campus um, in person last school year or in January. Um, just had, you know, maybe, maybe getting angry more often than usual, more irritable. And so some reached out and said, hey, like I'm not ready to go to therapy, but I'd like to learn a little bit about maybe what I can do. So I can give you these modules, I give you a little code, you sign in, you can learn. Um, and there are ones designed for parents. So that's you know, a free resource that, that we have. Um, but the other side of that, when I put on my discipline hat and a couple slides, um, if maybe you make a couple poor choices and you would be scheduled for a detention, um, I do, I'd rather than you sit and stare at a wall for an hour in silence where you really didn't learn much except for an hour is a really long time to sit in silence if you think that minute's a long time. Um, you can often um, choose to do one of these base modules, whatever topic would speak to you um, in lieu of, because they take about an hour to complete. Um, and then we just want to make sure that you're feeling good when you're not in class, when you're around here, some of you, you, you know, you have off blocks and you don't drive yet or you have to stay or for whatever reason. So we have a few things here, the coloring sheets, we got brand new colored pencils this year, woohoo! Um, but there's coloring sheets out there, I gotta have Miss Gribble put a new one up for this year because somebody, we finished off the Hope one last year. The Dolphin, I think, still has a lot of them to be colored. Um, there's the library over there that hopefully will continue to grow. Bring a book, take a book, do whatever you want with, with teen books. Um, there's some games around that you can, um, as long as you're quiet, either in here, if you're in here, really keep it quiet because the classrooms are trying to have class, um, or in the common area of the patio. Because sometimes it's nice to just sit and play some checkers or um, some Uno or whatnot. But if you get wild and crazy, then it becomes a different thing. Um, and yes, okay. Um, this one, oh, before I sent it out last week, I fixed this, but anyway, um, and, and that's the other piece. I will be sending out with the survey um, this entire presentation, so don't stress if you're missing slides or didn't take a picture or whatnot. It will, you know, I'll send the whole thing out um, tomorrow afternoon. Um, but Zone of Kindness, the whole school, we have a lot of different initiatives. Character Counts will continue um, every month, and there's nomination forms up in this, I call it the spinny rack by the front desk. That's where you'll find almost any form you need. Um, but there's some nomination forms. We recognize a student for each pillar each month. Um, well, recognize everyone who's been nominated, and then we select one, typically. Sometimes there's been ties, so we've had two. But you get $50, you get a shirt, you get some swag, and you get your own parking space. And so even if you don't drive, that space is yours, nobody else gets to park there. There's been some crowded day. Yes, the, earlier today I heard it was very crowded during internship time. So it'd be pretty cool to have your own space for a month or six weeks or so. Um, and then we have student government, safe school ambassadors. I sent out the club schedule um, today to students, and then I found two mistakes I made on it. Um, so I gave up on resending it, but just know the proper one is the one that will be posted around the school, and with Friday's e-newsletter, it'll be all corrected, modified for when the club's activities are starting. My big lecture here that I like to kind of hammer home is that you only get high school once. The old people in the room like me, uh, no, all you parents are younger than me. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Um, we, it goes really fast. And high school, like, once you leave high school, you've got a lot of time to work. So those handful of extra hours at McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and Publix and all of that, like, it's lovely, but not at the expense of not getting involved with school, not getting involved with student activities, um, not taking care of yourself. Um, if there is a situation where you are working to help support your family, then you really need to come and see me, Ms. Jones, Ms. Cove, because there are so many services and ways that we can make sure your family is taken care of that it's not falling on you. But when it's, you just want a nicer phone, choose school, choose being involved. Um, so some of the ways as far as school climate, zone of kindness, student government, safe school ambassadors, again, when that sheet comes out, there's basically something for everyone. Pick something and and at the end of the day, that's how you get scholarship money, that's how you get accepted to college. They like to see that kind of 
one notch above and beyond. Um, and then we started, and parents, you got the email. It'll be again in the newsletter on Friday so that the, the students will all have it. Um, but each day, we have a little something different on Make a Difference Monday this week. We celebrated an Eagle Scout who did a sensory wall um, this summer at a local church for students um, on the spectrum who get a little overstimulated. He built that, so he's featured. Take Care Tuesdays. We talked about waking up with a positive mindset. Way to go Wednesday. Lauren's here in the back, our basketball player. Um, so you can read about her, I won't say it all. I've got a good one a parent submitted for Thankful Thursday tomorrow, and then Fun Fact Fridays could be all sorts of stuff. We learned a lot of fun facts about um, the staff at our staff meeting today, so some of them I just may decide to share on Fun Fact Friday. But that's also a place where some of the required instruction, um, Medal of Honor Day, Constitution Week, things like that that we also have to make sure students um, learn a little bit about or are aware of, we'll use um, Fun Fact Fridays for those. Um, because we don't typically have you all in one place to be able to make sure that you're getting this instruction. But you do all have email that I'm confident you're going to be stellar at checking this year. Physical safety. A lot changed a couple of years ago um, as a result of Stoneman Douglas, of course. Um, so things continue to kind of trickle down and, and there's a big focus on how we keep safe. I'll do parent and student presentations down the road where it'll be a lot more in depth if you really want to go deep into um, some of these physical safety things we've learned through um, Secret Service, through um, through the Stoneman Douglas Report, through just lots of unfortunately years of research they've been able to have from school shootings. So that will be a session I offer. Today I'm going to skim. <laughs> um, in your classrooms also the first couple days teachers go over these emergency protocols with you um, and we start drilling. We are compliant with the statute that requires an armed officer on campus. Ours are through Indian River State College, but they are trained through the state's guardian program. Um, and Officer Williams, who I think is back on campus next week, okay, um, she is from the Sheriff's Office, so she has many years of experience here locally as a Sheriff's Officer. Officer Santiago, as you guys have seen all week, he came to us, Marine Corps, to New York Police Department, to here, and so he is also um, a very valuable resource and we feel very safe. And then Officer Osuch is here this evening. He's also trained as a guardian and he'll fill in for um, evening events and whatnot when we have students on campus. Um, we also, the state tells us how many drills and what kind of drills we have to have annually. Last year, um, we had a little bit of wiggle room um, because obviously we didn't wanna do too much crowding, gathering, etc. And we're going to ease back into some of them, but every month we are required to have a fire evacuation drill. We are required to have um, an active assailant drill, and we are required once a semester to have a hazardous weather drill. So um, anytime we would do any type of active assailant drill um, that seems a little more intense or whatnot, those I do warn you about. I do give heads up to parents, etc. Um, but the biggest thing I want to focus on here is that we follow the same as a school district with the standard response protocol, the SRP, which if you see in the slide above me, um, where it's blue, red, green, orange, um, biggest thing we want to talk about is the difference between blue and red. There's lock out, there's lock down. We've had several lock outs over the past couple of years. All that means is that there's some type of potential, maybe kind of could be threat outside the building. So they want everybody inside, not sitting out on the patio or waiting for a ride out here. And they don't want us to dismiss anyone. It could be somebody's escaped from the emergency room who's considered potentially dangerous. There was a bank robber, one of the banks down the road, um, you know, those kind of things. So we're not really in danger. Um, there's no threat inside, but they just want to make sure it stays that way. Um, so that's a lock out. Everybody goes about their business. Most times don't know the difference. Lockdown would obviously be if there was a threat in the building. And again, we go into this in more depth with students. The first assembly, we'll talk a little bit about some options there and within your classrooms. But basically, you escape through any possible door you can, or you do a full lockdown, hide, dark, etc. Um, so those are the options through the SRP so that we have a common language. Um, I have it on my calendar Monday to send out to parents kind of a little bit more detail, again, with the SRP. Um, Alyssa's law, that is, um, it went into effect, I believe, this fall. Everybody had to be compliant. Um, we were ahead of the game, but that's these buttons. You see the blue and the red. Um, those blue buttons, they go directly to the sheriff's office, and they 
bring in the cavalry very quickly because that basically means your life, somebody's life is in danger and you need police immediately to, de um, to disarm a threat. Um, so we are compliant with those. We have phone apps for staff. We have lanyards for subs. So we are compliant with Alyssa's law. Go bags, those emergency red bags, that's a picture exactly of ours. Um, they're by the exits, upstairs and downstairs. It just has tourniquets and other first aid supplies, things if there were to be an, a, a big emergency that we had a lot of injury or potential injury. So we always tell people, grab one on your way out to wherever you're going, um, just so that we have it in case of emergency or if there was something in the school. Um, for safety purposes, only one earbud or if you have the big headphones, um, you know, we, I love noise canceling if you're, you know, on an airplane or something, but it doesn't work in a school. You need to be able to hear if there is some type of alert or emergency situation. So one earbud or one ear covered only. And then we remain compliant with the Fortify Florida app, which is um, a reporting system. If there's ever any type of threat you're worried about or concern that you want reported anonymously, it goes to um, state education and FDLE and it trickles down super quickly through school district security, through the school, um, through the sheriff's office, so that everybody can quickly um, get together and determine what type of threat it is. We also have threat assessment teams as mandated here on campus. Um, we meet monthly just as precautionary measure to make sure that we're all up to date um, in, in assessing students and seeing if there's any type of threat. But if there was something, somebody had a concern reported, we would pull that team together that's made up um, by law of law enforcement, counseling professionals, um, educational professionals, and administrators. So we are compliant also with that. Um, ID cards, again, they're a key to the building. And the biggest thing I'm going to hit here is, um, and, and I loved it the other day, a student was like, am I allowed to let you in? I was like, no, technically no. I have my key, and if I don't have my key, I need to come around to the front door and push the buzzer. Um, because if you are supposed to be in this building, you have a key. That's adults and students. But that's also why it's so important if you have lost that student ID card to immediately report it to Ms. Jones or Mrs. Decker because they can get it deactivated so that key doesn't fall into the wrong hands. But the long and short of why, even if it's your best friend or there's siblings in the front row, your siblings standing at the door going, hey, you know who I am, let me in. You don't know who could be next to them behind them waiting to get in through that door with you. And I hate to be that person that has to think like that, but that's what all these trainings that I go to um, for safety and security has implanted in my brain is that we just really need to be cautious. So if you've forgotten your ID, you need to come from wherever, whatever, whichever of the two doors that are locked that you can use, the patio or the west door, it's not that much further, come to the front door. Um, all the other side doors and escapes that are only for emergency, those are alarmed that you are not to use those unless it is an emergency. It's $10 to replace it. Visitors, <clears throat> we encourage appointments that way, one, just for courtesy so that you have time and the person is available that you're looking to meet with, um, but also that way it can be pre-planned and we know who all's in the building. But if you're coming by for any reason, the, the Front pillar has the doorbell, it's got a camera, make sure you're prepared to show your ID. Once you come in the door, you'll get signed in, they'll scan your driver's license through Raptor to make sure you're allowed to be on a school campus, and then you'll head to your des destination, whether it's Ms. Jones, whether it's Dr. Bonds, front office, you're volunteering, whatever it may be. Um, you can't hang out if you need to use a restroom, okay? Um, for adult visitors, we prefer you use the one upstairs, where you just go up the steps, use the restroom, come back down and head on out. Um, versus going into the student restroom. Um, and then on your way out, you need to also exit through that door, even if you parked at the far end, so that we can have you checked out and you can leave your Raptor badge behind. Um, yay, Fred is apparently not going to be a problem. <laughs> but don't go to the Keys this weekend, was what our last update from Emergency Ops said. <laughs> it's probably going to be a wet one in the Keys. Um, but hopefully we'll be here. The biggest piece of this is um, Clark and IRSC and Martin County School District are three different decision bodies as far as weather. So whatever Martin County School District does technically has no impact on us other than if they close and we're open, you don't have a bus and we'll have to get you lunch. Um, so you need to be checking all of the Clark and IRSC channels. Typically we will follow the lead of IRSC, but again, it doesn't have to be that way. They don't have quite the same requirements of people being in seats and being here, etc. And sometimes it works out that they'll still have classes, but maybe we'll cancel, etc. So you need to pay attention to all things Clark 
um, for any type of weather, closures, delays, etc. Now we'll move away from physical emotional safety and we'll turn to my favorite job of all, which is discipline and enforcing rules. Um, that's my sarcasm. I hate that part of my job. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, and I wish all of you would stop ever putting me in a position to have to do that job. Please eliminate that job duty from me, please. Um, but big thing is attendance. You need to be in school, you need to be on time. This week I've allowed because I know I sat in an almost two hour car line at elementary school yesterday. Whew, that was traumatic, that was traumatic. Anyway, our car line's beautiful if you had to sit in car line ever here. It's so fast and beautiful, that's what I've learned. If anybody ever complains about car line at Clark Advanced Learning Center, I'm going to take you with me the next time, first day of elementary. Um, anyway, um, attendance is important. Be here, be on time. This week we gave a little bit of flexibility. We know people are working things out, working with the traffic patterns and figuring out, oh shoot, we forgot there's a private school there and the roads are backed up. Um, but detentions are going to begin for tardiness very soon. This is kind of getting the habit of leaving earlier and getting here on time because you never know what can happen. Um, if you must be absent, again, like we said, don't come here sick, um, but get a note in to Miss Wood. If you need to get that excused, A, so it doesn't count against you to lose your driver's license, because yes, you can lose your driver's license or not be able to get a permit if you um, miss too many days of school. The state will send us a list and say, hey, I'm seeing in the system kids miss too much, or hey, they're getting really close. Um, so those need to be excused absences. Also, if you don't send in an excuse note, um, teachers don't have to let you make up your work. And that obviously is gonna affect your grade. So be responsible, get those notes in to Mrs. Wood. Um, and after school activities, you can't attend. If you haven't been in school, if, if you didn't make it to school, you ain't gonna make it to the evening activities or the fun stuff. <laughs> Come to school, be on time. Um, all of our doors to our classrooms stay locked. Um, again, that's for safety purposes. So that means you got five minutes, look, I promise you can get from the farthest end of this building, which is this end of the knowledge room, to the farthest end over here in five minutes and still get a drink of water or go to the bathroom. I promise you can do it. So do those things so that once you enter the classroom, you're there, you're focused, you're ready to learn for the 85 minutes. Um, if you are late, obviously if it's an excuse, you had a dentist appointment, or you know sometimes there are really bad accidents along the way, and, and we'll see it on the news, but if you're a part of that, send a note and I can excuse that tardy, but every single person, if you are late to class, needs to come to the front desk to get a tardy pass printed out and you'll have to wait until a teacher or somebody can stop what they're doing to let you in the door. Um, again, this you'll, it's in the handbook, this is probably what I'll put in the newsletter, but if get those notes in um, and students were really much smarter than you because we were all teenagers, so Suspicious notes will be verified with a parent by way of things like a phone call that we know that it's not your voice answering. Okay. And if you, we know things come up, well, let me go back to that real quick, the bottom bullet. Um, you know, grandma's turning 100 in Alaska in October, and so you really can't miss that trip. Um, well, you know that grandma's turning 100 in Alaska a month and a half from now, now. So go ahead and send that in to Mrs. Kohuth so that she has on file and can pre-excuse those absences as long as you're doing well. Um, so that again, you can get those excused and be able to make up your work or pre-plan with your teachers. But they need to um, be sent in to Mrs. Kohuth for pre-approval. Dress code. Okay, I'll start with, and I say this every year, the state tells us as a public school, and we are a public charter, that we must have a dress code. We kind of decide as a staff, we get parent, student, other input every year. I send something out that says, hey, you got any input into anything of our handbook? Specifically, we'd love to hear what you think about dress code and a few other policies, but you know, give us your feedback. And that's how we kind of come up with our dress code here. It is very liberal. It is truly very liberal. But somehow students still like to really, really push it. Um, so the little meme sum, sums it up best. Raise your hands, touch your toes, if anything shows, go change your clothes, right? Very easy to remember. Um, Mrs. Wood is up in room 218. She's got some fantastic clothing that you can change into if you don't happen to have. Most times when somebody has something violates dress code, they're like, oh yeah, well, I got a sweater in my car. I just thought I'd see if you'd catch me. Um, but if you don't have something on you, um, we don't want you to lose valuable instructional time. So Mrs. Wood will hook you up 
Um, I bought some really cool, like there's these blue pants that are kind of elastic-y. Um, it's a really cool kind of turquoise blue. I had to make sure they would fit a lot of different sizes. So some of you might have to roll them up, but again, they're elastic waist, so it works. Um, but anyway, so I recommend being in dress code. Um, but the other piece the state does is tells us what consequences we have to issue. I can tell you, Mrs. Cohuth takes zero pleasure in having to send emails home to parents and students about dress code that's the required verbal warning and contact home. Really, please, we don't, we have so many other cool things we could be doing with our time. So um, just know that this is kind of state thing. The last thing I would want is to be like, hey, you can't cheer in the Martin Bowl this weekend because you had your second dress code violation and you're on five days and eligible for extracurriculars. Like that would stink, right? State gives us these um, dress code violation rules. <clears throat> the biggest change from last year is truly, we kind of went with the whole raise your hand, touch your toes if anything shows, but we had to put a, a kind of more um, specific measurement to it. So fingertip length and not when you're doing this, okay? Relaxed shoulder fingertip length. Um, last piece, there's something in your folder. There's um, an adopt-a-class sheet. Many, we've had so many adoptions come in already and we're so grateful. This is just that extra, those are $100 increments that our teachers can use um, and guidance and career counselor. Um, for those things that aren't necessarily budgeted, but they're just opportunities coming up with classes. Um, some use it for some pretty cool field trips. They've gone to the Bone Museum, they've gone down to the Science Museum, they've gone to different, uh, for environmental, like water testing, um, art stuff. Um, anyway, so that's an opportunity. Fund a project is also through there. Those all, you know, all of this stuff I send out in that Friday newsletter. So I know we are inundated with emails and we're so over everything digital and on the computer and whatnot, but I beg you to read my Friday newsletters because I try to chalk every piece of information into that one email um, that can, can get you everything you need that's happening. Um, we also always need parents for a variety of different things. We're doing a meet and greet uh, Friday, August 27th here at the school. Um, I'll bring some donuts. Um, now we step it up a little bit from just donuts, but it's not a full-on buffet. It's not, it's not. Um, but anyway, that way you can learn more about opportunities to volunteer here at the school. With that, I am going to turn it over to Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones, Ms. Jones, there she is. All right, the secret word for this portion is Ms. Jones is not quite as awesome as Dr. Jones. Oh wait, that's the wrong phrase. <laughs> Just kidding. You can find out the truth soon enough. <laughs> so some of you, if you're returning, have heard this before, so I do apologize, but um, you get to listen to it again. Nothing like a refresh. Um, so credit limits and your AA. Many of you come here because you're trying to earn your AA degree um, in addition to high school. Um, and the AA degree breaks down to 60 credits, which is essentially only 20 classes. So if you're starting in 10th grade, um, as long as you're college ready and reading, writing, and math, you can really um, easily get those 20 classes done over the course of three years. Um, there is a limit to how many classes you can take or how many credits you can take every semester, which is 19, which I don't know many students that actually want to take 19 credits a semester um, because it's six classes, six college classes in a lab. Um, or five classes in a foreign language, um, which is a lot because your typical semester um, is really 12 to 15 credits, so four or five classes. Um, if you do need to take more for some strange, we're not even gonna touch that. If you need to take more for some reason, talk to me and then we have to go through this whole process. Um, the college is really cracking down on how many credits students earn. Um, because we've had students earn upwards of 90, 100 credits sometimes. Um, we did have one student who pretty much maxed out and took 19 college credits every single semester. Um, I don't know how, but managed to do it with straight A's. But they're trying to limit that you don't go over more than like 66 credits. Some of the classes that we require, they don't require for a degree. Um, like the infotech is something we require, so you'll be a little over on credits, but you won't be able to earn more than what the degree requires. Except if you're in something like engineering or pre-med or something like that that requires a little bit extra than what you would normally have to take for a general AA, we can allow that. Um, like it says on here, pre-med, all your prerequisite classes, it's like 85 credits. So if you can get them done in time, um, 
within the time frame that you're here, that's fine. Um, but we'd like to keep it in a minimum and keep you, it, you just get what you need. And if you think about it, when you transfer, a lot of you end up staying in Florida when you transfer somewhere else. Um, if you transfer to a university beyond here, most public universities will only take up to 66 credits anyway, so you might end up having to do stuff over if you go beyond the 66 thing. For those of you that are returners, who has actually met with their advisor before? Okay. Well, you have me here as your counselor, um, but you also have an advisor at the college that's specific to you. You can actually find your advisor in Workday. If you can't find who they are in Workday, let me know and I'll, I can hunt it down for you. Um, the reason to have a visit with your IRC advisor is they set up a guided pathway that says, okay, well, if you're interested in business, you know, you should take these classes this semester, then you should take these, and they kind of lay out a plan for you. Um, we can always adjust the plan. It's not something you have to permanently stick with, but it's kind of good to have an ally over there who can touch base. If like there's a specific college you want to go to or a certain plan you want to follow, they can kind of help you map it out. Um, they can also overwhelm a little bit sometimes, so that's why I said we can always take it back and change some of the track a little bit. Um, and I can kind of help you with it as well, but it's good to touch base with your advisor and try to do it at least within this first year if you're new. Um, and if you're returning, try to do it within this first semester. Um, keep in mind that when you take the college classes, they stay, those grades stay on your transcript forever. You can't get rid of them. Um, even if you fail and retake a class, that F is going to be on your transcript forever. Um, so if you do end up retaking class, it's about $315 a class. Um, and I know a lot of people don't really want to shell out that kind of money. So if you do feel like you've taken on too much, especially this, you know, this first semester or in future semesters, you generally have a good idea within like the first week of class, let me know. We can drop you before it has any impact on your schedule or on your transcript. Um, I know Dr. Judd touched a little bit on tutoring and we're working that out a little bit. Like if you struggle with the FSA or EOCs, um, we will be setting up tutoring for students. But right now, don't worry about it. It will come um, and we'll let you know in enough time. As far as dual enrollment expectations, a lot of you are returning that I've seen here. Um, but for those of you that aren't, just understand our instructors, when they teach dual enrollment, they understand that this is a high school setting, so they're a little bit more forgiving. Um, or, you know, say you have Ms. Hutchison and there's an assignment that you're not doing in her college English class or you're falling behind. She'll kind of push you along and be like, hey, you haven't been doing this, you need to get working. Um, or she'll email or call parents. Um, I can't guarantee that when you go over to the college. Whether you're 15 or not, the college instructors see you as a college student. Um, we have no say-so over what they do, um, their expectations, anything like that. So we can have a little bit of a discussion when it comes to Clark classes, but just know they may expect a little bit more out of you and they may not follow up. You could go through the whole semester, not show up to class, and we may not know until the grades come out. Um, some people use that to their advantage. I had a girl tell me yesterday, that she started failing a class because she realized that college professors don't call home. Um, she is now retaking that class and paying $315 to retake that class. So keep in mind, touch base with your professors, whether they're here, whether they're at the college, keep that open line of communication because you're really the only one that can advocate. Um, you know, you can't have your parents call a college professor and advocate for you because most of the college instructors won't talk to a parent because they see you as the college student regardless of age. Um, you'll have a lot of substantial reading and writing outside of class because your classes only meet twice a week if you're in dual enrollment classes. Um, and you only may have two or three tests that constitute what your final grade is. Um, don't count on extra credit. The biggest point is your college classes, all of your grades and assignments and everything are all in Blackboard for any dual enrollment class. So the only person that has access to Blackboard is the student. Um, parents do not have access unless you as a student provide that access to your parent, um, or you as a parent demand access from your student. Um, we do not have the access, we don't have the login, we can't see what their grades are if they're taking class over the college, so that's something that um, 
hopefully, students, you'll keep your parents apprised of how you're doing. If you are taking an IRSC class that's not here at Clark, those classes begin next Wednesday. Um, most of you should have, well, you've already seen your schedule, so you know they're highlighted, it's highlighted in gray. Um, so classes start next Wednesday. If you have a class that's on a Tuesday that's over at the college, know that it will start the following Tuesday. Some of you have already come to see me about schedule changes. It's been very minimal. Thank goodness, thank you. Um, but there has to be a parent signature and like a legitimate reason for the change. Um, uh, outside of my office, there's a black box and some schedule change forms that you can fill out and drop in there. Um, if I don't get that, as long as I get like an email from the student and an email from the parents saying that they approve of the change, um, we may be able to make the change. Until any changes are made though, continue going to the classes that you're in. Um, don't show up while you're supposed to be in another class that you're trying to get out of. You have to keep going until it's changed, if it is changed. You have a week from the first day of class, so for anything that you've had here at IRS or at Clark, um, you have until Friday to request a schedule change. And you have a week, I think, yeah, Tuesday, August 24th, um, is the last day to drop a class over at the college without penalty, without it going onto your transcript um, or showing as a withdrawal. I have seniors listed on here, but it pretty much applies to everybody. Please check your IRC and Clark emails. For seniors specifically, I'm going to start sending out lots of scholarship and college application information, so that's always super important. You may get a little tired of it as a student, um, but it's pretty valuable and, you know, free money is a nice thing when it comes to scholarships. I don't really know how many openings I have left in classes as we did last week. But there are some electives that still have some openings if you're interested. And I have the classes and the times written on here. Um, we still have a few spots in web development and there's a cybersecurity class. Um, debate is always looking for students. Yearbook is a little full right now, um, but some students are coming out. There's an anthropology class that Mr. Judd teaches. I know some of you love having class with Mr. Judd. Um, you get to, you know, create your own lost civilization and go be like an archaeologist and excavate and all that stuff. Um, that's for nine weeks and then you follow up with an outdoor PE class, second nine weeks. And then there's a visual technology class, which is very, um, you do a lot of animation and computer art. So if you are interested in any of those and they fit your schedule or you want to switch out for something, shoot me an email. My email's at the top, tjones at irsc.edu. And by now, I would presume you all know how to read your schedule because you've all been in classes for, well, unless you're taking all IRSC classes. Um, but the room numbers are on there. If you picked up your schedule, your schedule's in your folder. If you're taking all college classes, I have the room numbers at the bottom of your shaded, of the shaded block. So like the government class up there, I have the room number listed. Um, if you're just getting your schedule tonight, I ask that you take a picture of it. So the classes start next week, you're not in a panic trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Um, if you're a new student, I have your IRC email address at the very bottom so that you know what it is. Um, and hopefully when you went to Student Success the other day, they helped you access your email um, and work day and all of that. And I don't know who's up next. Keep going, push, 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 push again. Oh, I love it. She wrote today. It, it, it is so funny. Joe. I know. It's a gift. Really, Back to Dr. Dredd. I mean, not really. I, I'm looking for Mr. McCrory, but I'm going to skip to some. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's here. Oh, morning buses. Y'all know this already. I'm so sorry, Hope Sound, that your bus didn't show up this morning till really late. Be patient. Let us know. Mrs. Decker is the bus person. And again, the first few days. Are wonky. Afternoon, you'll go out the west doors as soon as I dismiss you or whoever dismisses you through the PA at the end of the day, and you'll get back to your schools in time for whatever type of activities you're doing there or to hop on your bus home from there that you've always taken. Parking, you need a parking pass. That spinny rack I told you about, that's where you can get them. Give Mrs. Decker about 24 hours. She'll get uh, pass a decal for you and she will plop it in 
Um, the front, there's a green basket that says Outback. So you'll have your name on it, stick it in your car. The rules are on there again, they're in the handbook. Um, the biggest thing, don't hang out in your cars. Come in, park, come in. When you're done, go to your car. You can hang out here all you want, but once you get into your car in the parking lot, you need to be driving somewhere at the speed limit and not crazy. Books, the textbook room is going to open, I believe it's next Monday, maybe Tuesday. Oh, I forgot, I'm supposed to be talking that. Sorry, online people. Um, if you still have books floating around from last spring or this summer, get them in. There's a basket at the front desk because you're not getting any other books or codes until you return them. Um, and your DE textbooks, you need to come during the textbook window time. Mrs. Coe has already told you that. You have to have your student ID because we're going to scan it, so that means you better have it. Um, and a schedule, a printed schedule or on your phone would work too because sometimes different teachers at the college have different books, so we need to see that actual schedule. Um, make sure when you go to class, because if they say, never mind, in this class we're not going to use the book or the code or whatever, bring it back right away because we don't want to have to order for others if we have them in existence just sitting in your car. Um, and, yep, register for your access code. Don't wait until the trial expires, then it becomes kind of a nightmare to get into it. This will be the same thing for spring and summer, and woohoo, Mr. McCoy. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Chris McCoy, I'm the School's Technology Coordinator. And I'm going to run through a few things here tonight to give you a foundation of success while you're using the school's technology. So, <clears throat> on the school website, on the left-hand side, as you can see here, we have uh, several menu, menu options. One of those is technology. Under the technology link, there's another link called Crane Cornerstone. The Crane Cornerstone is where we've put everything you need to know about how to be a student here at Clark regarding technology. So if you're not sure how to get into My Pioneer Portal, which is a, a really big one that a lot of kids stumble with the first few weeks of school, this is how you can find out how to do it. So you would click on technology, Crane Cornerstone, and you would go to My Pioneer Portal. And there we have videos that show you how to log into My Pioneer Portal. We have a PDF that shows you how to log in as well. So one of the stumbling blocks that we see a lot is mom and dad are very kind, very helpful to their, their, their child. And you've registered on behalf of your child now, you are going to receive all multi-factor authentication requests. You are going to receive activation emails. And the student here at Clark is not going to receive those things. So you're now the middleman for the next three years. And this is no good. So many students today can't get in because all the addresses, all the activation emails are going to mom. Mom's at work. Okay? So get together if that's the case and start to work that out uh, later this evening or tomorrow. In your, in your folder, you have an acceptable use policy. This is the policy that gives you the guidelines for using the school's technology and the network here at Indian River State College in Clark Advanced Learning Center. So whether you use bring your own technology or you use one of our school MacBooks, you still need to sign this form, both mom, dad, and the student here at Clark. You will give this to me before you leave tonight. Clark's a one to one school, which means we offer everyone here the use of a laptop computer, and we want to offer best-in-class device, so we've gone with the Apple MacBooks, and you have the option to take one of those this evening, or you can bring your own technology. Either will work here at the school, so you have that choice. If you choose to take one of our devices, it, you're better able to maintain academic consistency in the classroom between yourself and the teacher. But if you choose to bring your own laptop in, that will work as well. If you change your mind later in the year and you say, my own laptop's not working and I'm 
going to decide to get one of the school MacBooks, you can do that at a later time also. If you take one of our MacBooks and it happens to break, I'm the person that you're going to come to to have that repaired. Okay? Typically, it's about a 10-day business turnaround time because it's a mail-in repair to an authorized service center. Um, there's some costs associated with, with things outside of normal wear and tear. It's a $99 fee if you damage the LCD screen or what's called the top cover. This is the top cover. And it's $2.99 if you damage the bottom cover or internal components. And it's $1,269 if the system is completely inoperable or there's malicious damage. Okay. You have the option to purchase an insurance policy, which is through a third party company. Um, this insurance policy covers theft, accidental damage, fire, vandalism, and natural disaster. In the event that I'm repairing your computer and you don't have that, in each classroom we have a standalone PC. So the, the scenario is you're not going to miss any academic stuff because you don't have the computer. You can log on with your network account to the PC in the classroom and all the applications are web-based. So because you have the PC, you can't say to the teacher, I should be excused from the assignment because I don't have the tool to complete it. What you will do is tell the teacher, please make an accommodation for me. I don't have access to my laptop at this time. I'm going to sit here at this PC, but I'm going to do the assignment by paper and pencil. And the teacher will make that accommodation. Okay, so the laptop's a tool for teaching and learning, but it's not the foundation of all instruction that prevents you from doing your schoolwork. So I mentioned there's uh, an insurance policy. Um, it's $70, and that lasts the entire school year, and it covers pretty much everything except for one keyword called cosmetic damage. So what that means is the MacBook operates, turns on, boots up, and, and works normally, but on the cover of it, it's got a big dent or a gouge. So on the school website, I have some photos. So last year we had 250, 250 devices deployed and in service, and we had two that had cosmetic damage, and those parents were nicked for the repair cost. One parent got nicked for $99 and the other for $299, okay? Neither of those students used what's called a snap-on shell. So this computer has a snap-on shell, and it's a plastic case that, that snaps on, okay? It's got like bumpers on the edge and stuff. It's not the end-all be-all, but it, it will help with dents and stuff like that. What I see a lot of is... Uh, kids put the MacBook in your book bag, and then you drop the book bag. Well, there's no protection in the book bag, and of course, if you drop it from that level, because these are aluminum cases, you're going to get those dents. And when you receive the computer tonight, it looks, it looks in great condition, because I give those out in great condition, and we have them repaired over the summer, and we don't give out things with dents in them. Okay, I know you want to receive something that looks very nice, and I would too if I was a new student here. So I would strongly encourage you to get the insurance policy. If you're getting that tonight, you're going to make checks payable to Clark, okay? And uh, do that before you come up through the line. The cases, I have four different cases on the school website. It's on the right-hand side in red text. They range from $14 to $29. And there's some more expensive ones. Uh, that go beyond the $28 as well that offer you more protection. And the cases that I have up there are just off of Amazon. This will be available online and, and the information there about what shell to purchase if you're going to get your own outside of those four is there. So here at Clark, there, we have a strict communication protocol. 
And that protocol is when you're contacting anyone here at the school as a student, please do so with your school issued email. You're at clarkalc.net or you're at mail.irsc or at mail.irsc.edu email. Because if you email me from dragonslayer at yahoo.com, I don't know who you are. Okay? And we send emails to you, and we want you to respond. So if you get in the habit of using these emails and we're sending out communication, then you're going to get that. And if you never use a school email, you're not getting the communication because you rarely log into it. So that's the MO for all the teachers and staff here. Do communicate through the school-issued email. To log into your Clark mail, you can find that information at the Crane Cornerstone at ClarkALC.net. That's our homepage. Okay? If you're receiving a laptop tonight, you're going to use that Clark email, which is a federated ID, to log into the laptop. And the format for that email is first name underscore last name at clarkalc.net. And your password is your 4300 number. We use two learning content management systems here at the school. If you've been a student in Martin County Schools, you're familiar, familiar with Google Classroom. And all high school classes use that. And mom and dad, you can uh, receive notifications for anything that's happening in Google Classroom and keep up with that. All college classes use Blackboard. And parents will not receive any communication, nor will they have access into the Blackboard system. So you would have to ask your son or daughter to log in and then using their account, you can look into Blackboard and see what's happening in the classroom. So what we're going to do for taking the laptops are, whether you've taken a laptop or not, you need to fill this out. And we're going to do a student-only line, and it's going to form here and go across. So you're going to go up here, you're going to get a power cord, and you're going to get two stickers, okay? One sticker with your name, it's a barcode. We use these barcodes for inventory, we don't have to type things in. You're going to stick the barcode right at the top of this form. You're going to put the other barcode on your finger, and we're going to put that on the laptop. Yep, you're sorted out for that will be first to last and easier. Okay? So, you're going to take the money. I will take money. I love money. You're going to give your insurance money to Ms. Judd, and Mrs. Kohuth is going to give you a sticker, and I am going to give you the laptop, okay? When you get your laptop, I want you to stay in this room, and I want you to power it on. And that laptop is going to go through an enrollment, what's called an enrollment profile. So I want to show you what screen to look for, because if you do not get this screen, right back around to me and say the screen didn't come up because there are some technical hiccups happening. Well, he pulls that up. Everybody, before you leave this room, please make sure you check all the boxes, sign your names, all that on the green sheet because we're going to need that. Um, and like you said, even if you're not taking a laptop, you need to leave a signed AUP with us. You can skip the line and bring it to me at the end if you're not getting a computer. Um, but one of the magical things that in the technology world, and some people had already experienced this, um, if we don't get our forms back, we're turning your laptop off. And then you have to get a code to turn it back on, which means you have to come give us whatever it is you owe us. So just go ahead and leave us your stuff so Mr. McCrory doesn't have to shut you down on your laptop. So go ahead, Mr. McCrory, sorry. Okay. When you open the LCD panel on this device, it's going to power on automatically. This is the first screen you see. It will default to the United States. You're going to hit continue. And if you want to set up any accessibility features, like your vision may not be great, you want super large text, you can do that now, or you can just say not now, and you can do it later. You must select a Wi-Fi network, otherwise you won't go any further. And you're going to choose Calc Guest. Continue. 
Okay, now it's going to begin processing, reaching out to our MDM server, and we want to see a screen that says remote management. This remote management allows us to provide support at a distance if you're at home, install software for you if you're at home, and you don't have to be come in to get it from us. Okay? So we're going to continue once we see that screen. The next screen is the AUP agreement. So I'm going to use two fingers on the trackpad and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to say agree. You can find that same agreement online. You must see this screen here that says asset tag. And this is very important. And you have to use great attention to detail. On the bottom of the laptop, it is a five digit asset tag. So you're going to type that in. Okay, 51566. Next. And next, it is going to establish a computer account. Your computer account uses a federated ID, and that ID is your first name, underscore last name, at clarkalc.net. Okay? From there, just choose all the prompts, and you're good to go. Once you finish, you can shut down, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow in school. Okay, so we're going to do a single file line of students only to keep it, to keep distancing going. You're going to pay Ms. Judd here. You're going to get two stickers in a power cord, or two stickers from uh, Mrs. Kobu in a laptop from me.
Oh, she's not using ours from someone else. Yeah. I feel like every person has their own piece of paper. Yeah. 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 Checky here. Did you tell them to type in their name? Yes, I did. Oh, hold on. We do have two. Well, it might be two families. Do we have names? Uh, we got Callaway J. Cox Good. and Okerson. Mike and okay. April. Those are the most recent, but there were at least two other families. Right. That's, that's all you have. I would have expected Soar's or well, Cody. Yeah, Cody, Soar. Piper, did everything work? Or? Yep, it, I got it. Okay. okay. You saw the, you typed in the number, mm -hmm. and it already pre-filled Piper underscore yep. start event? Okay. 